Um, I think it, it, it takes time for that to happen. Norman Mailer, rest in peace, um, said that when September the 11th happened, he wanted to write a novel about it on September the 12th, beginning on September the 12th. He said that the, the temptation to rush in is immense, but um, he was very wise about how fiction works. He wrote a whole book about it called The Spooky Art. And it's a spooky book if you're a writer because he understands the process so well. But the first thing you understand is that, um, is that writers have always addressed these problems um, sort of belatedly, really. Um, Dickens wrote about imprisonment for debt when there was no longer imprisonment for debt. Uh, child labor, forced child labor when there was no longer forced child labor. Swift wrote about the famine in Ireland when the famine was over. And that's not, that's not because they're being pus pusillanimous, it's because these experiences have to make a three-year journey, roughly, down through the cerebellum and the spinal cord into wherever it is your fiction comes from. The unconscious, basically. They have to process that. And sure enough, you know, almost on schedule, there were three or four novels about September the 11th. Uh, Don DeLillo, Claire Massoud, Jay McInerney, around 2004, and it's, you know, building up from there. I don't, I mean, Conrad wrote about the, the anarchists, uh, and if you read The Secret Agent, you might as well be listening to Hassan Nasrallah, uh, the character called The Professor, who's a suicide bomber. When a policeman comes up and threatens him, and he says, I have something in my pocket that would make you disappear. Uh, he said, you will never defeat us, because we, we, you love life and we love death. That's a quote from Hassan Nasrallah's right-hand man. Conrad said the essential characteristics of, um, of the terrorist, of the destroyer, uh, are vanity and sloth. Now, I thought, I thought that doesn't seem right to me. But when you think it through, it holds, I think, because with this kind of personality, the desire to make an impression is overwhelming. And today, that impression, of course, means fame, means, you know, M Muhammad Atta achieved immortality. Uh, he, is, he is ever living in just that one act. Uh, <coughs> the desire to make an impression is huge. Yeah, and there are only two ways to make an impression. One is by devoting your life to science or art or some, you know, recognizable, positive achievement. The other is destruction. Um, and I thought when I read Conrad's uh, diagnosis, I thought Mohammed Atta wasn't lazy, surely. He wasn't particularly, he may have been vain, but he wasn't lazy. But in fact, he was. I mean, he's, what, how many deaths has Mohammed Atta, if you take him as the leader, how many deaths has he achieved? Uh, at least a million in Iraq alone. Uh, what cycles of war will follow this? Uh, all from one man, one morning, one morning's work. You know. um, that kind of asymmetry Conrad was aware of in, in 1908.